Live from San Francisco, celebrating 10 years of high-tech coverage, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2019. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. We are back live here on theCUBE at VMworld 2019 at the Moscone Center, downtown San Francisco, along with Stu Miniman. I'm John Walls, and thanks for joining us here, day one of our three days of coverage here at VMworld 2019. We're now joined by the CEO of Equinix, uh, Charles Myers, is with us, and a CUBE rookie. We love that. <laughs> nice glad, to have you on the glad show. Glad to be here. Stu, Pleasure, John, yeah, thanks thank for you. being here with us. Let's, let's talk about first big picture here uh, from, from the higher level. The whole multi-cloud, hybrid cloud movement, what's going on now with the enterprise. Your perspective on kind of where we are in that shift, if you will, or that transformation, yeah. and, and what's, uh, what's driving it? You know, yeah. what, what's, uh, what's creating well, all the buzz? You get that question a lot, right? People ask the what inning are we in question. Um, <laughs> right. uh, you know, it's a regular. Uh, yeah, so what know, inning are years. we in? You know? and, well, you know, it's, uh, I would say a couple years ago, you know, people said, I don't think that, the, I think the national anthem is still being played kind of thing, you know? And uh, I think the game has probably started now, but um, right. but I still think we're uh, very early innings. Um, and, uh, you know, I think I'd actually bring it up to even a higher level and talk about what's happening in terms of how companies are thinking about digital transformation. And it, it, what, I, what I think is happening is it's becoming a board level priority for companies. They, they can't afford to ignore it. Um, you know, digital's changing the com, you know, basis for competitive advantage in most industries around the globe. Um, and so they're investing in digital transformation and I think they're going to do that, frankly, independent of whatever macroeconomic climate we operate in. Um, and so, uh, and I think you know, the big driving force probably you know, in digital transformation today is really the cloud. Um, and so, and what we're seeing is there's a, you know, there's a particular architecture of choice that's emerging for customers. Yeah, so Charles, g give us a little bit of a scope of your world because you know, there was a move many years ago, we used to say in the IT industry, you know, friends don't let friends build data centers yeah. because there's only a handful of companies in the world that are good at it. I believe your company's one of those. <laughs> well, thank uh, you. So, uh, <laughs> and, and not only, you know, even you, know, you talk about the mega providers like you know, Google and Amazon, right. they actually don't build many of their own data centers. They partner with certain companies and, and you're one of the first companies that I talked to that yeah. was, you know, when you talk about how we position multi-cloud today, well, you know, let me put some gear in an Equinix environment and you know, have that direct fiber uh, yeah. you know, into AWS or Azure and the like. Um, so that was early and we've been talking for a while, so yeah. give us a little bit of that that, that broad look, uh, you know, because from the, those big public clouds, you know, they're spending, you know, tens of billions of dollars a year right. to build that out. So, yeah. you know, and, and often your your real estate's a big piece of your world. So. Absolutely, and, and well, we certainly like to think we're pretty darn good at building and operating data centers, but um, there actually are a lot of people that build and operate data centers, and and of course the the clouds do buy from third parties, but they uh, but uh, you know they build some of their own and they do buy from third parties as well. Uh, we think we occupy a you know pretty special place in the overall data center landscape um, because candidly people you know can buy credible data center capacity from a number of players. What they can't, what they really want though is not so much a data center as they want to connect to somebody specifically. Um, and that's where Equinix is really different. You know, with 10,000 you know, customers inside of our digital ecosystems, uh, you know, and we, we operate in 200 data centers across 52 markets around the world. Um, and that, you know, we represent kind of something very special and it's that interconnection piece that really differentiates Equinix from the rest. You know, you've had some, uh, I guess, expansion news in terms of partnerships with VMware uh, that you announced. Uh, talk about that a little bit, if you would, about how sure. you've grown that relationship and, and where you think that'll take you. Sure, and it bridges a little bit back to Sue's uh, earlier question, too, which is, you know, kind of what, what role do we play and uh, how does it, you know, frame in the overall cloud landscape. What was announced today was um, a preferred partnership uh, with, uh, between ourselves and, and, uh, and uh, VMware and, uh, and also Dell um, to deliver the uh, VMC on Dell, um, you know, offer which is really aimed at the sort of hybrid cloud requirements for enterprises, customers who you know, have workload, a, a set of workloads, some of which may be very well suited to public cloud, and they may go either native on AWS or with a VMC on AWS type solution. Uh, but a lot of times they, for a variety of reasons, are looking for a hybrid cloud solution. Um, and they want to implement that on private infrastructure, but they would like to get the benefits 
of, of cloud. They would get, like to get the simplicity, the flexibility, the as a service convenience, but they need the control, uh, the compliance, the predictability, and the performance that private infrastructure allows. And so we're, that's, what, that's what the solution is all about, and we're, their, we're the preferred global uh, colo partner for that solution. And, and do companies have a pretty good idea when they come to you about what they want to do and where they want to do it? Or do you have to shepherd them through that a little bit because there are a number of factors, I would think, that go into that consideration. Absolutely, and I would say it's more typically the latter. There are certainly some who come with a well-developed, you know, sort of view on things, but it, that often changes to some degree, and, and we we like to think of ourselves as, you know, it's probably an overused term in IT, but it's um, as a trusted advisor in terms of helping a customer think through. It's really one of the great things that I think both VMware and Equinix are positioned as, which is somebody who doesn't bring, say, here's the answer, instead they come and say, look, the answer probably depends on a lot of factors. And so you may want a, a private cloud solution, you may want a public cloud solution, you probably want a hybrid cloud solution and a hybrid multi-cloud solution, so let's talk through what you're trying to accomplish and how we can get you there. Yeah, uh, Charles, uh, you know, we know that things are going to change, and the advice we always give to practitioners is whatever you deploy, yeah. you need to be able to have the agility and have options so that a decision you make today is not going to freeze you from doing something in the Absolutely. future. Absolutely. Um, a lot gets talked about in the multi-cloud world, what is portable and what things are moving, and you know, we know Kubernetes is not magic. Right. Um, your, 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 your company must have a, actually a really good view of things going from the public cloud to my own racks to moving sideways because many times moving between clouds is just moving between rows in your data centers That's right. or, or over so, some connection. G give us a little insight what you're seeing, yeah. what's, what's the trend That's along a, that you, line. You bring up a really great point and one, frankly, I think our, you know, our sales teams and our, our you know, solution architects are constantly talking to our customers about which is future proofing your architecture because you don't know kind of what your needs are going to be tomorrow. Um, and so being able to deploy infrastructure structure in a way that has greater agility and flexibility is really critically important. And that's why putting private infrastructure immediately proximate to the cloud, being able to get to the performance benefits, uh, the economic benefits of that um, is really key. So that's that's definitely something we're seeing uh, you know, as a, as a critical part of the conversation with our customers. Mm -hmm. All right. How about edge computing? That's yeah. something we touched on a little bit this morning, yeah. but uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure you've got uh, you know, some strong feelings about where we are today. I do. You know, it's funny because I always tell I always tell everybody inside my company or out, I always say, be careful about the word edge because one person's edge and another, another person's core, right? Uh, right? You know, and so um, you know, uh, we actually talk about Equinix as really the best manifestation of the digital edge today. And perhaps that sounds somewhat self-serving, but I, I would say that when you look at people who want to place infrastructure in a geographically distributed way, and they want to interconnect it with clouds, with networks, with other members of their sort of supply chain, um, Equinix is really the best solution for that in many, many cases. And um, so we really talk about edge-oriented solutions with our customers inside of our, our you know, sort of population of 200 data centers across 52 markets today. Now, when I, when I typically I think when you're hearing edge Today, people are talking about an even more geographically distributed footprint that is out, you know, closer to IoT sensors or closer to, in, you know, customer endpoints and those kind of things. Um, and I, I think that will happen over time. And I think people talk about compute and storage moving closer to that edge. Um, but I think that's going to, you know, take place over a long period of time. I think 5G, once it's fully densified and, and deployed, I think will start to drive some of those applications. But what we're seeing today is the current digital edge at Equinix works uh, very well for most of these edge related applications. So what would you call it then? If, if it's not edge, because uh, you said one man's We edge do call it another, the edge. Yeah, right. So so we, we call it the <laughs> digital edge. <laughs> right, uh, because some know. people might operate out there as a core business, right? That's right. And to them, that's the core, right? You, I mean, you raise an interesting point. Yeah. Kind of depends on your perspective and how you see it. Exactly, though. so we but, do call it the digital edge. And you think from the telco side of that slate though, I mean, mobile applications, mobile devices, you know, we all know about the usage trends, what we've seen yep. in the last 10, 15 years. Yep. That's going to just explode. 
So how are you preparing for that onslaught? Because you know 5G's coming. It is, well we're actively involved. In fact, we have, we've had real success in a number of, I would call them, edge sensitive or edge related ecosystems. Um, digital payments, um, you know, connected car, um, these things. And people love to talk about autonomous driving. The reality is, is that most autonomous driving um, you know, interactions are done on board. Um, you, you, can, you don't even have time to go out and make a request to the cloud, right? You know? um, but other connected car value Propositions that do interact, you know, with the, you know, with a farther edge, um, are things that we've actually been working really closely with equipment providers and service providers on, and they're having great success in implementing those things using Equinix as part of the architecture. All right, uh, Charles. How about security? You know, when you live in this multi-cloud world, you know, I, I need security that can live in, across the environment. Yep. How, how does uh, Equinix make sure that it's a trusted partner in that that whole security story? Well, there's a variety of sort of layers to it. You know, we, you know, our the biggest responsibility we have specifically is physical security, because people are are trusting their infrastructure to reside in one of our facilities, and it needs to be physically secure. So there's five layers of security between the front door. I know you've uh, toured one of our facilities and have gotten the full experience of all the biometrics and all the checks and uh, balances that occur in terms of being able, someone to be able to gain access to their facility. So there's the physical side. Then there's really, you know, sort of virtual or, you know, uh, digital security. And, and you know, what, what we're doing there is really cultivating the ecosystem of providers. And we have a number of really uh, sophisticated customers who are delivering cloud-based security solutions. VMware is one example of that. Um, but, you know, there's a variety of other customers that have a sort of you know security oriented value proposition companies like Zscaler and other people that are you know really doing that well for uh, for customers. So I think that you know we're we're really more about cultivating that full ecosystem so that customers have access to the full portfolio of security tools that they need. Well, Charles, thanks for the time. Uh, we appreciate that, and I do want to congratulate you on having probably the strongest team showing <laughs> of theCUBE so far today. Hey, hey how did Charles do today, everybody, all right? That's the Equinix culture. All right, all right. Well, trust me, they're clapping, all right? <laughs> I was expecting a little more of a rousing <laughs> applause, but next time. We'll work on it. All right, good deal. Hey, <laughs> thanks for being with us. Pleasure being we here. Appreciate Thank it. you very much. Charles Take Myers, care. joining right. us from Thank Equinix. You. Back with more, We're, we are live here in San Francisco at VMworld 2019.